Hello and welcome to Rockingham, where we're marking the halfway point in the season for the Marangoni Tyres Gas Shocks Compact Cup. There's some established names at the top of the standings, but Matt Suckling caught up with some of the other drivers who've had consistent results to put them inside the top ten. Kevin Denwood from the Compact Cup. Kevin, it's been quite a frantic year so far, a lot of races done. How's the season kind of gone for you? It's started off bad. I've been qualifying uh, really bad. Don't know why. Um, done a bit on the setup that uh, a couple of weeks ago. Got better and better uh, at Donington. Got a fifth and a seventh. Well pleased with that. Some really close racing, so it's going well. Looking well today. Yeah, we've got Rockingham. Is this a new circuit for you? First time. Tested here on Friday. It was OK. It's very slippery, but looking forward to it. I think it's going to be difficult for everyone. There's a lot of cars, as always, with the, the Compact Cup. So you're looking to be up there once again? I am. I'm top 10 I'm looking for. So if I get in the top 10, I'll be pleased with that. And then hopefully progress into the race. And we're looking towards kind of hot weather, hopefully, today sometime. Do you reckon the car's going to cope pretty well with that? Uh, on Friday, we was testing and it didn't cope very well. Halfway through, it gets really hot. So uh, I, I expect a lot of cars to be going a lot slower. Tyres went off very quick as well. So let's have a, a couple of predictions from you. What are you hoping for the race? Uh, kind of give us some places you're looking for. Uh, I hope to qualify as a 10th and normally, I normally am a good starter so I'm hoping to get a good start and top five would be good. Uh, Chris Etheridge from the uh, Compact Cup. Chris, this year so far you've broken into the, the top 10 a couple of times. Is this good going? Yeah, for my first ever season in any kind of motorsport I'm quite happy with that. Uh, first race of Brands actually was quite a learning experience but since then I think I've uh, got quite comfortable with it and I'm enjoying the racing, it's good fun. With these consistent results as well, you're, you're high in the championship, you're doing well there as well. Yeah, I mean, that's the, I think that's the key to is, is to keep consistent, not getting any scraps and make sure the car keeps running and then, yeah, just see where I end up at the end of the season. But uh, hopefully I can keep in the top ten. Now, with the competitors you've been racing with this year, it's kind of been, they may have had a little bit of an advantage with you not racing as much, but rocking them, pretty much playing, playing field for everyone. It is, yeah. I mean, this is the first time I've, I've been here. I've not even had any practice or testing, so it's complete lottery to me, to be honest. I mean, a few of the guys are out on Friday and see some of them have been out this morning as well. So hopefully I can just uh, keep up with a few of the people who know the track and uh, see where I go from there. Now, before the season is done, do you reckon you can get onto that podium? It's going to be a tough ask, to be honest. I think maybe if I, we go back to Donington, I know the track then at least, I might have a chance. But if a top five is my next aim. If I can get in there, I'd be happy. Well, there's the hard-working circuit commentator in action, whoever he is. I've heard he's pretty good, though. So here's the grid for round seven of the Marangoni Tyres Gas Shocks Compact Cup. And on the front row, it's the two drivers that top the championship standings, Stephen Roberts and Stuart Voice. Riding up 10th on the grid is Kevin Denwood, who of course lies 8th in the championship coming into this weekend and the other driver that we've just heard from Chris Etheridge is 18th on the grid he'll be a little bit disappointed with that Nicky Kwesi from Bishop Stortford is 21st on the grid just ahead of Feroz Darva and further back it's the man from Hagley in the black country Matthew Warren he's on 25th David Drinkwater, he has to start at the back, he was second fastest, but penalised for going four wheels off the circuit a few too many times. So the red lights go on then, it's 13 minutes plus one lap of racing, they go out now. It's a very hot afternoon here at the Rockingham Motor Speedway, and let's see how the cars can adapt to that. It's a good start by Steve Roberts from pole position, he's got the inside line as they head through turn one for the first time, it's this big grid of 32 cars and we're on board with David Drinkwood who's had a tap there into a half spin through turn one he's still sideways and he spins around I'm sure he got some contact there not quite sure who from though up at Dean Hairpin for the first time will they all make it safely around they're going three abreast in places but it looks like they're just go about going to make it going through there was the yellow number 19 car of James Wynn Stanley the driver from Stamford in Lincolnshire so quite local to Rockingham Here's the replay of the start, this is from the number 23 car, Andrew Cunningham, making his way down the start and finish straight. What can he see, if anything, of this incident involving David Drinkwater? Cunningham started 26th on the grid, there's a touch there somehow, that's lost Cunningham, a little bit of ground, ah yes, and there goes Drinkwater, trying to find his way around the outside, and the two of them locked together there, as they went, turn through, went through turn one with Drinkwater sideways. 
Well, that's put Drinkwater's aspirations of climbing through the field back a little bit, one would think. Meanwhile, the rest of the field heading down Steel Straight and through Gracelands for the first time. We go on board here with Chris Etheridge, who we heard from before the race got underway, and he'll be clean keen to make up places. He was 19th fastest in qualifying, bumped up to 18th with that penalty for David Drinkwater, the man who has had some podium success during the early part of the year. So Etheridge turning his way onto the school straight. You can see the entrance to the back pit lane here at Rockingham. And then they go into Brookshire Kane. That's the number 10 car of Scott Carruthers. 17 just behind him is Dean Cook, the sometime racer in the Dunlop TVR Challenge. He's been quite successful in that championship down the years. And his familiar Orange Tuscan. That's the 57 car, which is Will Gibson. Gibson, who's had some strong results during the course of the season, but wasn't out last time at Donington Park. Field turning their way through the left-hander at turn one, heading to the Dean Hairpin, where it's a hard-breaking area. You can see a cone that has possibly been displaced on the first lap. From this part of the circuit onwards, for more than half of the lap, it's a very technical infield section. That red car there is number 20, which is James Cook, who's 10th of the championship coming into this weekend. He's another one to be making up some ground. James has had some very consistent finishes this year, the man from Norwich. 32 cars out here this weekend at Rockingham. It was a good start to the race for Farad Darvitt in the number 13 car. He has got up to third position. Martin Gambling, he started sixth. He was on the podium in both races at Donington Park last time out. He's fourth here, ahead of Alex Dew, who started third on the grid, the former Clio racer. So down the steel straight for the second time. There's Will Gibson once more. Will, who in that 57 car, started fifth on the grid has lost one position so far during the course of this race. Through Tarzan Hairpin they go then. Gibson just ahead of Kevin Denwood, who did make a good start to the race. He said that, generally speaking, he does get away well at the beginning of the races, and so it's proved here. He's got himself from 11th it was on the grid up into the top 10. Through the Brookshire Kane then, and Martin Gambling has the pressure piled on here by Alex Jew. Gambling in the 99 car, fifth in the championship coming into this weekend, had a non-finish in the first meeting at Brands Hatch in the second of the races there. That caused him a little bit of a setback, but he's bounced back strongly since then, and he's been on the podium in the last two rounds. And Gambling and Dew both closing in on Farrar Darver then, who started fourth on the grid. Farrar didn't have the best of weekends at Donington Park, getting caught up in somebody else's instant in the first race there that caused him to retire from the race but he's going well here in third position gambling is fourth due fifth then it's will gibson in the 57 car in sixth place and then it's the bronze and blue machine of kevin denwood seventh this is the view from on board for our darver then as he turns through yentwood and they climb this hill there is a little bit of gradient at rockingham possibly a surprising amount for people who've not raced here before which will be most of these competitors in the Marangoni Tyres Gas Shocks Compact Cup. Now gambling there has Alex Dew side by side with him briefly, but you can't really go too abreast through Piff Path, the little S section that takes them up to this part of the circuit, which is the deceptively tight left-hander at Kirby Corner. From here, it's down the long straight, the steel straight, towards the more sweeping left-hander at Gracelands. And that is where we find them now. So Darverit is in third, Gambling in fourth, but there's barely a car length between them now as they go on the straight down towards the Tarzan hairpin, named after the similar corner at the famous Zandvoort circuit in Holland, of course. Turning their way through that hairpin now. There you can see Dean Cook again, the silver car with the uh, orange livery on it. He's just ahead of uh, James Cook. It's a battle just about outside the top ten. Well, Farad Darva and Martin Gambling also most overlapping there. Gambling having a look on the inside at Brookshire Kane. But Farad Darva did enough to repel the silver coloured car. But there is now a bit of a train gathering behind Farad Darva. It's almost like we've got a 28 wheeled BMW compact. Meanwhile, Dr David Drinkwater is the man fighting through the field. And it's the newcomer just ahead of him, which is James Wynn Stanley in that 19 car. Through turn four they go, on to the start and finish straight. It's flat out now, all the way up to Dean Hairpin. Farad Darvitt is on his way there now. Under braking now for the left-hander with Gambling right behind him. He locks up and he goes straight on. Does he get round the corner? 
I'm not sure he does. Martin Gambling is full of glee. He pounces on that mistake from Farad, from Farad Darva and goes up into third position. On board with Farad now, and he's lost two places because Alex Jew has gone through as well. Alex Jew goes to fourth, Farad Darva down to fifth position. Now, where's Will Gibson in all of this? He was in sixth place. I shouldn't imagine he's too far behind Farad now. In actual fact, the gap has increased a little bit. And have we had a change in the order? We may well have done. Yes, we have, because it looks like now it's Kevin Denwood who's up into sixth position in his bronze and blue car. Meanwhile, the leader, by the way, is still Steve Roberts. Stuart Voice in second place. But the action further back down the order is much more exciting. And you can see in the background there, Scott Crothers is trying to get alongside the car of number 81, which is Neil Roach, as they headed through Gracelands that time. Dew now trying to find his way through on the inside of Martin Gambling at Tarzan. Not close enough to make that work. Not late enough on the brakes either. It's a brave move to try and make that one work in these equally matched cars. All of them effectively identical machines prepared in accordance with the championship regulations. They have to run Marangoni tyres. They have to run gas shock absorbers as well. A number of other mandatory parts to convert these BMW 318Ti's from a road car into a racing car. Now, different, oh, and there's someone going off there. That's for Ross Darf in the number 14 car, looking for a place to rejoin the traffic and in such a congested field, that can be hard sometimes. Now, here comes for our Darva around the outside of Alex Jew, back up to fourth position he goes, then at turn number one. I did notice heading back onto the banking, gambling and Jew took quite different lines. And the line that uh, Dew took seems to have allowed Darva to go back up to fourth position. Does he hold on to it at Dean Hairpin? No mistake on this occasion, like he made on the previous lap. So Rardi goes back up into fourth position, but Dew, I'm sure, is not going to give up. Down towards Yentwood again. I think Kevin Denwood, who's in sixth place, might be starting to close in again. Looks like it's uh, Gibson in seventh, Neil Roach in eighth place. And there's almost a touch there between Alex Dew and Farad Darva. There might even have been a little bit of contact there, unintentional, I'm sure bit of dust being kicked up as well some more just being kicked up as they turn their way through Piff Path and towards Kirby once more so it's Darva doing everything he can to hold on to this fourth position meanwhile David Drinkwater fighting his way up the order we're on board with him you can see there he's heading up towards 70 miles an hour as they head through that part of the circuit and then now at the left-hander at Kirby which is one of the slower points of the lap he's side by side with the number 40 car which is Warren Gazard so he's up inside the top 20 now is David Drinkwater having started flat last on this 32 car grid and of course having that tangle at the first corner on board with him now 75 miles an hour pushing to 80 miles an hour up towards 90 miles an hour before they get on the brakes for the Tarzan hairpin you can see that rather large dent in David Drinkwater's left hand door that was left by Andy Cunningham who was locked in combat with him at turn one of this race this is Chris Etheridge, well how is he progressing? And the answer is probably not in quite the way that he would have liked. The man who has had some consistent results this season that have put him up into sixth in the championship, not going quite as well here at Rockingham as he has done at some of the other circuits, I'm sure by his own admission. Through Brooks Kane, someone getting sideways up ahead of us. That may have been Wynn Stanley. Meanwhile, this is Neil Roach with Scott Carruthers trying to go around the outside of him. It was Roach that was locking up. That got him alongside the 57 car of Will Gibson. This is 7th, 8th and ninth positions with James Cook there in the red car completing the top 10. But it's Kevin Denwood that's heading that group in 6th place. He seems to have lost a little bit of ground for this 3rd place scrap, which is still absolutely nose to tail as they make their way through Piff Path now and out towards Kirby. Gambling in third position. Well, it f if it finishes this way, it will have been the same top three finishers in each of the last three rounds of the championship. It was Roberts, Voice and Gambling in both of the races on the Grand Prix layout at Donington Park. Can it be the same top three for three in a row? Gambling had those first two podium finishes at Donington, but had been consistently in the top six up until then when it finished. Oh, and someone else locking up. And that, I think, is the Stuart Place car, number 72. Yes, it is. That's a battle further down the order. Kevin Robbs is the man that he's doing battle with for something like 27th position. Back on board we go with, with Chris Etheridge. So he is running just outside the 
top 20 at the moment, but getting almost nose to tail there with James Gwynn Stanley, car 19. Away they go, down the straight. Is there a gap here to the left-hand side of Tarzan Corner? Well, Chris Etheridge thinks so. He's going for it, trying to go all the way around the outside of Win Stanley at the hairpin. And he was alongside the back of both of those rear-wheel drive cars. Just step out a little bit as they exit the corner. And has Chris Etheridge managed to get through in the end? Let's have a look on the left-hand side of the circuit. Is James Winston going to appear there? No, he's not. So it looks like Chris Etheridge has made up some ground. Here's this battle involving Neil Roach and Scott Carruthers again. Eighth, ninth and tenth tyres smoking as they make their way through the left-handed Dean Hairpin at this swelteringly hot Rockingham circuit. Through Edward they go and back on board once more with Chris Etheridge then. In this number 33 car, the man from Greys. Ooh, is he losing a position there? 61 car is just ahead of him. That is Matthew Warren, Warren, the MOT tester and mechanic, who's 35 years of age. Here, though, is Steve Roberts in car number 56, on to his last lap. The man who led the championship by a single point coming into this race at Rockingham. And the way things are going, he's going to extend that advantage by a little bit more. So far, he's got the fastest lap of the race as well. We're on the final lap. It's a big lead though for Steve Roberts and the scores are still to be settled further down the order because Kevin Denwood now in sixth position is right on the tail of Alex Dew in fifth. But here comes Steve Roberts then in that 56 car, the man from Huntingdon turning his way through the Brook Chicane for the ninth and final time in this race. He's been really unchallenged all the way through. Stuart Voice in second place has not been able to live with him and the chequered flag goes out. And it's a fifth win of the season for Steve Roberts in round seven of the Marangoni Tyres Gas Shocks Compact Cup. Well, here is Stuart Voice in second position. And the man with the Momo backing from Bill Ericke just couldn't do enough to stay with Steve Roberts today. I'm sure he'll be keen to narrow the gap for race number two. Well, third place looks like being Martin Gambling and fourth for our Darv there, just a little bit further up the road. And I think that Alex Yu is going to hold on to fifth position. It would be his second fifth place finish of the season. He does so. Kevin Denwood is in sixth place in the number 55 car. Uh, and that is uh, his second best finish of the season so far as the rest of the field come through, including Neil Trotter there, who finished in 11th place. That's Simon Roach, he's just ahead of James Wynn Stanley. This is for 22nd and 23rd, but you can see how the battles really do rage on all the way down the order in this fantastic championship in its first full season. And it's just going to be Simon Roach that's going to hold on to that 22nd position. James Wynn Stanley is 23rd and 24th over the line is Iggy Kwesi. So let's take a look at the results of round seven of the Marangoni Tyres Gas Shocks Compact Cup. And it was Steve Roberts that took the win by just under 13 seconds from Stuart Voice with Martin Gambling back in third. It was all much closer thereafter. Farad Darva fourth after being third early on. Then Alex Dew and Kevin Denwood completing the top six. Bonus point for fastest lap. That went to Steve Roberts. And David Drinkwater, although he climbed up the order, was excluded from the results. Stephen Roberts, Victor from the first BMW compact car race there, fifth win of the year, a nice easy stroll for a Sunday. Yeah, well I wouldn't say easy, um, I mean, we've work, been working on the setup with AW Track Sport and the BMW Specialist.co.uk, I mean we've got the car sorted now so it's just a case of me driving it and around here it's just critical, you need a very good car uh, and you know I just kept driving neat and tidy and managed to pull away, yeah. Although you have taken quite a few wins this year, the championship is still very close between you and Stuart. Yes, yeah, still really close. I mean, I think we've got a little bit of advantage now with our setup over Stu's, where at the beginning of the year I think it was the other way around. So we're, we're kind of, it's oscillating between the two of us at the moment. So, you know, let's see what happens in the second race and uh, see what Stu's going to do with his setup. Well done, the victory, Stephen. Thanks very much.
all set for race two, the grid determined by the results of race one. So it's Steve Roberts and Stuart Voice on the front row, Martin Gambling and Farad Darva on row two. And after his part in an incident in race one, David Drinkwater has to do it all from the back once more. This is Chris Etheridge. He is on row 11 of the grid this time. He didn't make any improvements in the first race. In fact, he went back a couple of positions. And he's got some work to do here. And he's certainly jostling for position. If you've ever wondered what it's like to be attached to the front bumper of a BMW around Rockingham, well, that was your answer. It's Roberts in the lead then. Voice in second. It was Farad Darvid just about holding on to third place. He locks up again, though. Gambling was on the outside. Kevin Denwood goes through on the inside as well. Looks like he's gone up to fourth position. We're going on board with number 42, Mark Cornell, the disc driver. What can he see? Well, he can see quite a lot of compacts ahead of him. Not all of them on the circuit. There's one or two on the grass. Uh, who's that coming through on the left-hand side? Just difficult to work out at the moment. It may have been for us, Darva, but we'll have a look at that as the race goes on. So it's Roberts leading already, pulling out a bit of a gap over Stuart Voice. Martin Gambling is there in third position as the cars make their way through Kirby Corner for the first time in what will be, again, a 13-minute plus one lap race. Fourth Barangani Tires Gas Shocks Compact Cup Championship, round eight of 14 in the season. Race is still to come at Silverstone at Donington Park and at Cadwell Park as well. You can see Drinkwater in the background there, the yellow number 67 car that was on the right-hand side of the shot, just behind that silver and orange car of 17 Dean Cook. It looked to me as if Drinkwater had already made up several places. He's got a lot of work to do. He'll certainly be head looking for the Ravenol Biggest Improver Award in terms of the most number of places gained during the course of the race. Here's Neil Trotter, car number 12, the former stock catch racer. It's his first year in the Compact Cup, and he's heading through Brook Chicane. In race one, Neil Trotter finished in 11th position here. It looks like he's just tucked in behind Scott Carruthers. We finished a couple of places behind in race one as the field heads back onto the oval to complete the first lap of the race. There's Trotter, who comes from a short oval racing background initially, enjoying the switch to rear-wheel drive for this season. That looks like David Drinkwater on the move there through turn one. Another place made up. And he's certainly heading in the right direction. He's passed something like 10 cars on the first lap of this race. Yellow flags up ahead, we have a retirement from the race, and that is Farad Darv, isn't it? I hadn't spotted, but he didn't come through at the end of lap number one, and that's Farad Darva who finished the opening race in fourth position, already out of this one. Bitter misfortune for him. Alex Dew has Kevin Denwood breathing down his neck. This is for fourth and fifth positions. Cars heading towards Kirby. Martin Gambling, who dropped... Well, he didn't qualify so well for the first race, so he took his time in getting up to third place, but this time he's held third place pretty much from the off. He's starting to get away from Dew in fourth place now. Denwood in fifth position, and the sixth car coming through is indeed Will Gibson, car number 57. Make their way through Gracelands. Quite a sweeping left-hander. It is possible to run out wide onto the grass and maybe into the gravel traps there, but it's a warm afternoon, so there should be a reasonable amount of grip for the tyres but of course they are working quite hard and it's the second race for the competitors in the compact cup in the space of only just over a couple of hours through Brookshire Kane there's Denwood then in the 55 car very well presented machine he was explained to us how he was quite pleased with his season so far lies eighth in the championship coming into this weekend and and we get some more top six finishes and he seems to be on a bit of a run at the moment then he'll be moving up the order worth noting that the man who lies third in the championship coming into this weekend that's Colin Bysouth well he's not here so he's going to be surrendering that third position in the championship cars heading into turn number one then of course this one and a half mile oval used on only a handful of occasions for IndyCar racing the only series that use it now is the pickup truck racing series, but the infield very well used by a variety of national championships. And of course, the flagship event here at Rockingham is the British Touring Car Championship. And last year in the Compact Cup, we were joined by one of the stars of the BTCC, Tom Onslow Cole, in around at Donington Park. 
Well, Steve Roberts claims it wasn't easy in the first race, but he's looking at making it look very easy in race two again. Now there's Chris Etheridge, number 33. He now is ahead of the 60 car, which is that of Terry Davis. We're on board with him now. Through Piff Path, just riding the kerbs there where it's pro, but then onto the brakes for Kirby. It's tighter than it looks this corner. He runs out wide. Does get, that give the opportunity for Terry Davis to try and get through? Well, he's certainly alongside. The dust was being kicked up there by Chris Etheridge. Now it's a long run here to the next left-hander at Gracelands and Terry Davis has been able to go through. So that mistake at Kirby has cost the number 33 car, Chris Etheridge, dear. We'll try and get the place back. Well, as they head up towards tyres. And one well, not really close enough yet. You can see the brake lights going on on Terry Davis's car. Oh, oh dear, he might lose another place here as well. It's to car number 16, which is Ivanus Zaleski, first to be known as Eric and Zaleski who finished the first race in 17th position, going wheel to wheel pretty much with Chris Etheridge there. 61 car just tucked in behind them as well. That's Matthew Warren. Through this Brook chicane they go. These cars battling further down the order. Outside the top 10. Around about 15th, 16th position. That is the kind of territory we're looking at there. That's James Cook and Neil Roach, I think, going side by side, a little bit further up the road. Dean Cook is there as well, and so too is that man, David Drinkwater, in car number 67. So he has made up some very good ground now. He's on the verge, I think, of breaking into the top ten here as they head through Edward. Oh, lots of locking up of brakes and tyres. Someone there went a little bit wide. As they come out of the corner, somehow David Drinkwater has emerged at the head of that group. Then it's Dean Cook. And it's actually the Freddie Tatham car. I beg your pardon, not uh, James Cook. It's Freddie Tatham who is up there. James Cook a little bit further down the order in actual fact. And also involved as well is that number 81 car, which is Neil Roach. Along the steel straight, towards Gracelands they go. Drink water it is, with Dean Cook, as I say, used to driving something a little bit more powerful, one of the TVR Tuscans that used to compete in the One Make Championship, now find a home in the Dunlop TVR Challenge. But racing this weekend with the Marangoni Tyres Gas Shocks Compact Cup. Not sure if David Drinkwater's done too much to do some panel beating on that passenger side door on his yellow car. They'll put the head of this group, but uh, that damage certainly not slowing him down. Into the Brook chicane he will go then. With uh, just behind him Cook, then Roach, and then it's Freddie Tatham. So I think now Drinkwood has just about made it up into the top ten. He's got a bit more ground to make up though, if he's going to make up any more places. And that is the problem with having to start right at the back of the grid of course. Well, it may well be this battle that is the one that he needs to try and catch now. It's between Bryce Greenwood and car number 66, the lateral entered car, and also number 10, which is Scott Carruthers in the Marangoni Tyres entered machine. They turn their way through the left-hander at Dean Hairpin, past the stricken car of Farad Darva, who will be bitterly disappointed to be out of this race at such an early stage. Two non-finishes for him in the last four rounds of the championship. And there's Neil Trotter as well. Well, he has had a good race so far. Started 11th and now doing battle with Will Gibson for 6th position. They're on board now with Trotter as they make their way up to Kirby. One of the features of this Rockingham circuit is it's rather marked out by cones because there's so many different possible configurations here. The cones are needed to tell the drivers which bits of track they're not supposed to be using. Meanwhile, Steve Roberts sails serenely on. It's a really good drive from Steve. We're not seeing an awful lot of him, I'm afraid. But that's testament to the incredible job that he's doing at the front of the field. 37 and 88 are Jim Carolan and Shawnee Patterson, the Scottish driver joining us again here at Rockingham this weekend. The Scottish Compact Cup is going very well indeed, and occasionally we have their drivers joining us in this country. Well, Will Gibson has lost that sixth position, hasn't he, to Neil Trotter. So Trotter now from 11th on the grid up into sixth. He's had a very good drive, but he's not just going to settle for that, is he? He wants fifth place as well. Kevin Denwood is currently inhabiting that. The leader, by the way, is Roberts. Second voice, third gambling, fourth due. And then this man that we can see right in front of us. That's Kevin Denwood. But Neil Trotter, well, he's not going to settle for sixth position, I don't think. 
battle going on down the order involves James Cook. Also James Wynn Stanley you could see there as well. Up at Kirby it is still. Trotter in sixth position. We're on board with them again. Heading back towards those grand grandstands but we'll turn away from them briefly because we're going to head through the left-hander at Graysons now. A couple of overtaking opportunities still to go in this race. And the first of those is at Tarzan Corner. They're going to be side by side, but Trotter's going to be on the outside line. He's going to switch to the inside here as they come out of Tarzan. He is. Can he get his car alongside? The overlapping certainly as they go past the school pit lane now, but he's going to be on the outside line for the Brook Chicane. Can he make it through? A quick glance across to the left-hand side of the circuit. He turns in, and where is the other car? It's still there. It's still Kevin Denwood fifth. And Neil Trotter in sixth position as they go back onto the banking once more. A little bit of bodywork trading from the rear of the number 12 car of Neil Trotter. That's possibly a sign of some close combat earlier in the race. There's that 16 car of Irina Seleski. his way up towards Yentwood someone else locking up there on board with Chris Etheridge then he's towards the bottom end of the top 20 here it's an interesting view that we get it certainly gives a good sense of perspective it also gives us a, a good sense of how big those BMWs are when they're right in front of you on a mistake there and that is Neil Roach I think with a mistake coming out of Kirby there a big fishtailing tank slapper now he's going to be, have to be careful not to lose ground here to Frost Darver, but also to Freddie Tatham as well. And Roach goes wide at Gracelands too. I wonder if he's got a problem. It looks like he's got a problem with the handling with that car. Maybe the tyres have well and truly gone off. And he's completely lost grip now. Rejoins the circuit, but he's losing a, an awful lot of ground, unfortunately. He'll do well to get home from here. Crawling up to Tarzan Happy now. Well, he's not even crawling, he's stopped. And there's Neil Roach out of the race. Well, he's found a gap in the traffic. It looks like he's going to continue. Let's see if he can make it all the way to the chequered flag. These two certainly batting, battling towards the chequered flag. Kevin Denwood and Neil Trotter for fifth and sixth position. A lock up there from Denwood, but it doesn't seem to have done him too much in the way of harm. Trotter still sixth, Gibson seventh. Greenwood is in 8th place, this is on board with Trotter, through Yentwood. I think all four wheels off there, it's fair to say, from Denwood, just ahead of us, using all of the curb, oh, and that's a spin for Freddy Tatham, lots of dust being kicked up, well that should confuse the drivers behind him, one car did get past, look, actually to avoid any form of contact there, I would say, still only a car length between the 5th and 6th place drivers, as Steve Roberts makes his way up into the Brookshire Cane. He's virtually now at the end of this race. His gap over Stuart Voice is not quite as big as it was in the first race, actually. But once again, he's got the best lap on a 149, almost 149 exactly. Not quite as fast as he went in the first race. So he is heading up towards the chequered flag as the 40 car for Warren Gazard is sideways there. Eric. Zaleski is trying to make it through and it's absolute chaos that Simon Roach all over the grass there you wouldn't know it was the final lap of the race it's almost like it's the first lap still this fight going on then for fifth and sixth positions Denwood I think is just about going to hold on here for what will be his second fifth place finish of the season and his third top six in a row we'll be very pleased with that the checkered flag has gone out Roberts it is that has won Voice is second gambling third Alex Dew you saw take the flag in fourth place, then Denwood and Trotter fifth and sixth. That's Freddie Tatham after his spin at the front of the shot there, but not too far behind is Terry Davis. But Davis goes wide at Brookshire Kane, and this is the final lap, so he's going to lose a place, is he? Zaleski trying to find a way through on the inside. Gazard there trying to have a look around the outside as well. They're going to be side by side as they come out of the corner. It's well down the order of this battle. It's for 14th and 15th position. Gazard tries to make it three and pressed over the line, and it very nearly is. But it's Zaleski that gets 14th, Davis 15th, and Gazard 16th, with only just over six one hundredths of a second separating all three of them
Here are the results then. Roberts took the win by 9.8 seconds this time from Stuart Voice. Martin Gambling was another 13 seconds back in third. Dew then was in a good drive from Trotter. He completed the top six. Bryce Greenwood eighth behind Will Gibson and David Drinkwater did make it into ninth in the end ahead of Scott Carruthers. Stephen, sixth win of the year. It's still pretty close in the championship, though, after all these victories. Yeah, um, I mean, we knew we had the pace today, so we've got the results we wanted. Uh, got two wins, um, but like I said, it, it's going to be it's going to be tough. To keep you know throughout the rest of the season. Uh, Stu's going to be coming back strong, I'm sure, at Silverstone. So we're just going to get our heads down, keep working towards Silverstone, and still trying to get quicker. Looking towards Silverstone, is it a circuit you've raced before? Circuit you're kind of keen on? It's I've raced at Silverstone, but not in the configuration. I think we're all on the new Grand Prix bit, and uh, so I've not not raced there before. But it should be pretty flat out in these cars. Cause it's quite wide, quite long. Uh, so I'm looking forward to it. We're still close. We'll see how it turns out for the next rounds. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. Stuart, second place in that race once again, but still the points are keep coming in, and uh, you're keeping on Stephen's tail. Yeah, we are. We just uh, just need to set the car up a bit better, really, and. Uh, Hopefully we get a bit closer to him. It's just, I think all what's in it now is just car set up. There's no uh, power issues or nothing like that. It's just all car set up and uh, how much time you put in the cars, really. Yeah. Right, Martin, you're getting used to this third place Malark now with uh, four for the year. What's next on the, the list to try and get higher up? Yeah, I've got to try and beat Stephen Stewart at some point. I think it's going to have to happen soon, I think. For that race, was there more battles for third place? A couple of guys around you? Uh, it was a pretty quiet race after the first lap. It was quite a squeeze, all three of us, uh, Stuart, uh, Steve and myself, on lap one. But after that, I settled down in third, and it was pretty quiet. Just knuckle down and do the lap times. Rest of the season, you're still looking to keep out with the BMW? Yep, certainly will be. Well done, another third place. Thank you very much. Six rounds to go in the Marangoni Tyres Gashots Compact Cup, and this is how it's shaping up. Steve Roberts now nine points clear of Stuart Voice, but it won't take much of a slip for voice to get back on terms. Alex Dew goes up to third, Martin Gambling fourth, Neil Trotter fifth, Kevin Denwood is sixth. That's all we've got time for at Rockingham. Join us at Silverstone for the next round. <laughs>